Hey, Rush is Reckless here, and today we're going to be playing some draft. So there are three major parts of draft. The first is obviously drafting, the second will be battling, and then the last will be leveling up or replacing cards. Now, each of these have their own position in the draft sequence. However, some are arguably more important than others. The bulk of your draft is actually just drafting your deck. So let's go through each and every card individually. Shadowfen is arguably the best faction for draft, particularly because of the cards they have in their faction. However, on top of that, Cordia is arguably the best legendary overall. So I'm definitely not going to even bother with these choices let's go with cordia next we have some interesting choices here um these cards in my opinion don't really see that much play i don't think they're that great so i'm just going to settle for the cheapest one here which is the brute sages next up we have these cards we have a spell and we have gp um soap cleanse obviously don't play this card unless the other options are absolutely terrible um green prototypes isn't actually too bad and unhealthy hysteria also isn't too bad you could definitely decide over which one you want here but i'm going to go with gp now for this choice terrific slayers actually is a very good card in draft not only because of the effect where it deals damage to other dragons but also because it is a pretty decent runner now on the other hand it could take wandering worms because i do have one dragon the legendary of course and it's the cheapest option here i don't think azure hatcher is all that great i mean it is good if you're running butchers but i obviously didn't get the option yet so i think i'll settle overall for wandering worms so we have a triple six option here all of these don't look too great, but actually Curse of Strength is good because conversion sees a lot of play. You can use it to counter enemy phoenixes and even enemy death effects in general. Next up, we also don't have that great picks here. You could actually settle for Dansu and then play a dragon deck because we already have two and Cordia itself can hatch up to three. However, Mark this play obviously doesn't see any play and Feral Shamans is not really that good. I think I'm going to settle for Dansu, although it isn't that strong of a card pick. So there are two pretty good options here. You can either go Talk Sack or Dubious Hags. Talk Sack actually does synergize with the Brute Sages. However, the thing that I'm seeing a problem here is that I don't really have any units that synergize well with Talk Sack because most of my deck is kind of relatively expensive. Devious Hags is a solid unit and for two mana, I'm definitely gonna take this. So in my opinion, these cards aren't that great. I mean, Westwind Sailor is moderate, but it's still not that good compared to other, other options in general. I think I will just settle with Copper Skin here because for two mana, you also get Poison Synergy and it's the cheapest option here. So I might as well use it for faster cycling. So at face value, these options here, I think it's pretty obvious, which I should actually take. This is extremely expensive and not that good unless you get upgrades on it. This card is not good unless you get upgrades on it at all. And this card, although it's also not that great unless you get upgrades on it for three mana, could actually see a lot of play. And honestly, I will most likely max out this card throughout my draft. So definitely going to pick this one at the same time i want to mention that is going to be my very first runner so now i don't actually have to worry about runners I, ideally i get two but it's not a huge necessity i think one at least is enough since i've kind of already settled on the fact that i'm, I'm going to be using lime limbs as my main runner i don't think i'm going to upgrade this at all so i'll just settle with witches which at even at level one is still a decent card so these options here are actually pretty good stoic protectors is a solid four mana for one made of frogs is obviously a very good card in shadow fan and then you have soul crushers which is pretty solid because i don't have any five mana a card in my deck however since i'm very much a type of player that likes to rush and play cards for faster cycle i'm going to go with reign of frogs here and that leads us to our very last card pick here a neutral legendary which honestly my absolutely favorite <laughs> neutral legendary is loris so i got really lucky here so that concludes our drafting process i think this deck is pretty solid the only problem is we don't really have any five mana cards however we at least can maybe come with a bit of two and three here or even gp can come in handy and i really want to explain my strategy here so my strategy here is known as funneling funneling refers to pretty much funneling all your upgrades into three cards by doing this you get very small amounts of very powerful cards for example i could get like green prototypes dubious hags and lime limbs as my main three while the rest of my deck isn't very good but that's okay because because all I'm looking to do is cycle back for the stronger units and I end up overpowering my enemy like that. So into our very first game, the enemy just skipped his turn. So I'm going to go ahead and honestly, not a great hand because I should have a two mana here, but it's okay. I'm going to be playing for most value, which would be my dragon. So once again, just looking to play what's most valuable here, I will play Loris actually first and I'll cycle out Lime Limbs after because I don't think this card sees play until I start upgrading it. So definitely not going to be playing this card throughout this game. So at this point, I have a very beautiful Cordia play here. I could either play super aggressive here or play a little bit back here. I'm going to go ahead and play it back because I have dangerous suitors in my deck, which could easily combo off all these dragons for next turn. So I'm going to cycle out witches here. 
And that looks like good game, honestly. I think I don't think there's any way that the enemy could deal with this unless they took confinement, which I mean, good luck if you're trying to play with that. And there it is, guys. One game already in the bag. So now comes the upgrading part, which is also a very important aspect of the game. Um, if you look at these cards, ideally, I actually will cycle out cards of strings if I ever lose a match. So I'm never going to upgrade this because you don't get the upgrades back once you take out the card from your deck. Instead, I will actually go ahead and upgrade witches because although you could upgrade worms, the only thing is it only activates the effect. And once again, we don't have too many syner synergies other than Accordia and Dansu. So it's going to be obviously a late game ability and it's much better to just go with witches here. So these next cards are actually very solid picks. Dansu only works if Cordia gets all her eggs off. So instead, I'm going to go with a less risky upgrade. I'm going to upgrade Lime Limbs here because if I get this to level 5, the games get much easier. And now these, this option is pretty obvious. I already went over mine. Not to get Curse of Strings or Wandering Worms, so let's go with Dentsu. So we're going first this time, not looking like the greatest hand, honestly, but the problem is I could actually keep this and then maybe play for a Witch's turn, or I could cycle this for play for Lime Limbs, but honestly, I don't see ours getting any better than this. I guess we'll go ahead and play this. The biggest downfall with that is if they play um, Butchers then I'm going to be kind of doomed. So they play Merz here, which is honestly pretty solid in my opinion. I really don't want to lose to an Obsidian Butcher, so I'm going to go ahead and play Witches first, and then I will cycle out Crim's uh, Copper Skin Ranger. So this even rock is kind of interesting. I think this is actually a big misplay. So not only do you want to be playing structures in the center, so ideally he actually the player would play right here, which would block me from going up here and sure i get this which is, i'm assuming that's why they actually played the structure here is just to block this entrance however i could probably just get away with this into cordia next turn and then the game's looking really good for me because i don't really have to deal with this for, in the meantime and i will go ahead and cycle all crystal strings here oh so the enemy plays cordia now um once again i think we're just in a huge winning position here because not only do we pop two eggs here i can pop the third with my own cordia and the game's looking really easy i could also play here or i could play here this is a tough call because you if you play here and then the two lined on the baseline which is actually a pretty decent chance because the only openings would be on this side or i could play here and hope that an egg goes on this side which honestly it's so hard to say for sure but i will actually play on this side because i really want to hope that the egg lands here which it does not so i'm very sad but that's okay let's move on and i will cycle out lime limbs here so yeah as i mentioned before terrific slurs is actually a pretty phenomenal card which um interested it's interesting to see if the enemy actually is running it i get off a bunch of damage here and i could actually play out my wandering worms dubious hags and brood sages here which i'm very happy for so maybe that's actually the the way i'm going to take this game and ideally actually we use this dragon for dance too so i think it really depends how this where the 50-50 lands. So it ends up killing the dragon, which at this point I will go ahead and cycle out Dansu. I don't think it's very useful if after killing that. And instead we can play, we can play rather like here into here, I guess is fine in the meantime. This kind of sucks because that is a very, very powerful convert from the Blood Ministers, but we actually do get Cordia again, which is pretty solid. And on top of that, we could play Loris right here for next turn. So the way I'm looking at it now is I could play Cordia here and then play to just block off their push with Reign of Frogs and maybe play Loris next turn. I think that actually isn't too bad at all. So we're going to go ahead and do that. This into this Cyclo GP and I think we're happy with this. Honestly, this fluffy bad boxer play isn't too big of a concern for me because once if you look at the board, this dragon egg would actually move up first before getting attacked so honestly it's not too bad and we also get a very beautiful loris here so i'm happy by all measures honestly at this point i can actually go ahead and play witches here and i will play loris right after which will allow for a perfect clear and by all me by all means i'm actually really really happy with this in my opinion at this point i'm going to cycle up crimson Copper Skin Ranger because I know that the enemy also plays Cordia as well as other dragons. Playing Cordia now, which um this kind of sucks that it perfect trades here because if it didn't die, then I could actually get off a very beautiful Dansu, but all the dragons are dead, and now it's looking like there's no point of playing with Dansu. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle it out. And I actually will keep Curse of Strings. I think it could be more useful than the latter. And we can go ahead and actually just play very aggressively here, which to me sounds okay. I also still need to keep in mind that they play Blood Ministers, so it's a little bit tricky to play around. I think I will actually just go ahead and trade this instead. Wow, what a turn. Honestly, that is disgusting. They cleared my entire board here, and 
as you can see, they're actually they actually are playing around my Loris. However, this still plays into Loris. So I might actually just go ahead and do this, which I think is solid. Um, I do want to keep in mind they have Blood Ministers in hand now. And I mean, one ideal counter could easily just be top decking into Cordia here. And I'm playing Cordia. That would be fantastic. If we get that, we'll do that. If not, I think Curse of Strings is still pretty useful. So we don't get it. Uh, now it kind of sucks because technically witches into Reign of Frogs would have been better. But it's okay. We'll go ahead and take Curse. And the game's not looking good actually because they're going to convert my Loras with their Blood Ministers. But we're going to have to take our chances here. Well, I'm really, really surprised at the fact that they do not have Blood Ministers in hand. This could actually just be game winning at this point. Uh, I'm not totally sure how I want to take this because you could use Wandering Worms, but you could also use um, Witches. So it's like... Uh, give or take but i'm going to cycle this out for two mana hopefully there you go we got a two mana seems solid and we're going to just play very very aggressive here cordia here into gp dubious you guys know the drill i think oh maybe i just realized i probably actually misplayed but i still think this is decent because after you play like this this and then play dubious hex last so i end up do giving them an egg which does suck a lot um but this is still a very solid play i think it's still fine last thing i want to mention here is that they are they are at exactly two health which is the exact same strength as my lime limbs so that's really all i need to look for at this point and then we win easily like that so dansu just in, just in terms of keeping mana consistent i'm going to ha actually use dansu this turn i really would like to somehow grab some some damage here because then lime limbs is literally just on the verge of lethal but that's all right we're going to go ahead and play dansu here poison and then brood sages whatever we poison i think that is also very fine and it's okay to play beside because from what i understand they're not playing any card that can counter that directly ah oh, that sucks it's actually the only tile i can't reach i'm actually going to go ahead and cycle hope for something better um this actually isn't too bad thankfully i did draw this right on time but ideally we could have actually just got we honestly probably could have gotten lethal now i think about it or sorry, we would have been one mana off, but if we top deck Loris there, we could have almost gotten lethal if you play Loris here. If you play Loris from this side, then it ends up attacking that. And then we could have cleared this with Dansu or something and it would have been really close to lethal. Yeah, so I think at this point, we are once again, super close to lethal. It's so sad that we don't have the tools yet, but if I cycle this for something better, we could win. And we cycled this for probably the best top deck we actually could have gotten. Curse of Strings here into Witches on the structure, and that is lethal. Going to our upgrades again. I did mention at the very beginning about this track called Funneling, and I ideally you get green prototypes, Dubious Hags, and Lime Limbs upgraded to five. So here I'm definitely going to go for Dubious, and GPs here I'm definitely going to go for that, and Lime Limbs, so why not just grab that as well? So into our next game here, um, Honestly, if you think about our deck right now, Lime Limbs for three mana is technically the strongest unit we can get, and it has two movements, so I might as well just grab that, and I will cycle out Curse of Strings. A counterattack with Razor Sharp Lynx is also at level three. It's important to keep track of which cards they have leveled up, so I will definitely keep that in mind. Next up, we can play Dubious into GP. I guess it's not the greatest, but it is looking like the only thing we have at the moment. So I will actually play D Green Prototypes all the way in the back, and then I will... I will play Dubious Hex next. Honestly, one great thing about Witches is definitely this picture here. Um, Witches ends up giving me that one strength and just completely demolishing the enemy board. I'm going to go ahead and take this. And because Green Prototypes is our only one strength unit on in the game, I'm obviously not going to top deck into anything useful. I'm going to go ahead and cycle out Loris as well because at five, at six mana, you don't want to be playing a five mana. Icicle Shivana is definitely a very, very strong opening. Um, it's definitely a very, very strong combo here. So it is definitely looking a little tricky. They also get rid of their GP, which is pretty smart and not to give the Vitalize effect. And now we are not looking too good. Um, there isn't much to say, but actually there is a small trick here. 
remember we did cycle out dangerous suitors so we will expect to draw back within two turns if i play cordia here we can actually go ahead and grab some very very solid cards i'm going to go ahead and play cordia and once we get dan su i mean the game's looking actually really good for us i will cycle out crimson ranger i don't think it's that great in this hand and we're looking to use wandering worms for next turn play is a little bit tricky because ideally i actually saved this unit for my own to use cards of strings which means i couldn't actually use wandering worms in, in that sense but i want to see what i can cycle over here and we cycle into something not good i think at that point we will just go ahead and use wandering worms aggressively we also have to hope that they don't play into one second let me play this this and hope that they don't play into loris because loris right here in the center would be very disgusting Shavana is looking so disrespectful. We also will end up losing hopefully only one dragon here. If we lose two, I will be very sad. 50-50 and we lose another dragon. That is very tragic. Um, I do want to mention this is a complete misplay um, because this is going to walk into my base and that would kill that. So I don't even have to worry about this in the meantime. Instead, I'm thinking of just playing very aggressively with Dansu on the board into dubious hags and we can set up for a honestly pretty solid cards of strings or loris turn but i have to cycle one of these two to cycle back so i will cycle out my loris i think is fine but i don't know i'm a little bit indecisive okay we'll cycle out cards of strings because loris is technically better in more cases than not we take three damage but they lose out a fluffy i think it's definitely worth it this is also very funny by using yelling weavers here like they did they ended up getting the dude's hags token right here which means i'm pretty sure if they expected to use their feline into my base uh, i'm sorry into the dragon they had no option to because then this dragon would defend it here we're actually looking very 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 solid i'm really happy with this kind of play i can go ahead and drop this into a gp but I, before even doing that i'm going to play this and then i will cycle because once again cordia is a very powerful win condition so we're definitely looking at that and we can go ahead and cycle out which is or loris i think which is is less good and as you can see is just non-stop so much value we're going to even drop a copper skin ranger and the game is looking very good for us wow orgone leechers actually seeing so much play here that is a very solid way to defend we at least get in two damage but honestly that was very sad to look at at this point we have to cycle out something i think cycling out rain of frogs is fine and we can definitely play loris into dubious hags i want to keep wandering worms to actually deal damage to one of their units so actually if you look at the board now there's so much to play i think see ideally you actually play dansu here but the problem is it can get frozen and then icicle burst is pretty much just game over if i had dubious hags at level three that would be a very solid play and or at least i've had a way to clear this that'd be a solid play once again we don't have any of those so we're going to go ahead and play dubious hags first here actually sorry i will play loris first and then i will play dubious hags next and then i'll finish with wandering worms just right behind so chill beards is interesting i think that's the only reason why they actually set me at five health so now i know what their, their actual main con win condition is at this point which is chill beards um i'm obviously not going to play into that we have a very very solid play here with five mana and six mana so let's cycle out witches and see if we can get a dansu down which we can very very solid i'm going to play dansu first because cordia is drawn next turn which means i really want to cycle them together go ahead and play that I can definitely drop a Lime Limbs into the base and then I can defend this dragon with Dubious Hags and we're looking very very good in this position guys. This also will probably force out a kind of freeze card so I do expect them to use Ice Burst just to freeze and I mean realistically we can also curse the strings that if we really need to. Wow interesting play Blizzard Bombs into Ice Burst with Shivana could see a lot of potential here. Surprised that they don't have Shivana in hand actually. And now they probably have to Icicle Burst this. They don't Icicle Burst it, guys. I'm looking really, really good here. We can definitely go ahead and Curse of Strings. We can also play Copper Skin with Brood Sages. But why play that when you can just top deck Recordia here? So we'll go ahead and top deck Recordia here and then win the game. Wow, so they were actually really close to killing me. 
Um, but not necessarily. They would have, because if you real, if you remember their cards, they had only level one green prototypes. If they had level two, they could have actually attacked into there and won like that. But there you guys go. This is game three. We win. Okay, so these will be the last upgrades before concluding this episode. Let's go ahead and grab Devious Hags. Once again, funneling. So we need to get these upgrades. And Tansu level three or GP level three. This is a very difficult choice. We've seen already in two games where Tansu has been our main win condition. So I'm actually going to go ahead and upgrade this only because at level three, it gets a huge power spike of gain three instead of gain two. And that's going to conclude this episode, guys. We are currently three wins in and we only have three left. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and catch you in the next one. Peace.